Welcome to the Out of Your Comfort Zone podcast. On today's episode, we're going to be speaking to two parents about their experience and thought process when sending their children to study abroad with CIEE to destinations like France, Spain, and China. Enjoy the episode. So welcome to our next episode of the CIEE Global Navigator Stories podcast. And today we're going to have a different sort of episode. Today, instead of talking to CIEE alums, we are going to talk to parents of students who have traveled on CIEE summer programs, high school summer programs with us. Um, Some of, in some cases, over multiple years with multiple siblings um, traveling, which is super exciting. We think it's very important to give the parents perspective as well. We know that when a family is considering sending their child abroad, a parent wants to hear from a parent. A parent is going to be reassured and comforted in hearing the perspective of somebody else who has taken that I'm sure I'm not a parent, but what I imagine to be really scary step of letting your baby go um, abroad with a with a study abroad um, company. So we wanted to hear your opinions and your experience. So can Maria Teresa, can you introduce yourself? Hi, uh, Maria Teresa. Um, I have three kids that have done CIEE. Our oldest son uh, went to Nanjing, China. Our middle child, our daughter, uh, went to Ren, France. And our little one, just this past summer, did uh, Ren, France. And cannot speak highly enough about the experience they had beforehand during the program and once they came back the enthusiasm they had both for the host family the local culture that took them in um and their overall language skills uh proficiency definitely went up in all three great and michelle Hi, I'm Michelle Schreiner, and my uh, oldest son uh, studied abroad in Madrid, uh, not this summer 23, it was uh, the last summer uh, 2022, and uh, we're anxiously awaiting my youngest son, can't wait to apply uh, to study abroad in 2024. Uh, His brother studied in Madrid, and that's where he's hoping to study as well, so we will see. Great. Very exciting. And so for both of you, what is your relationship with study abroad? Um, Do you have a background in which maybe you studied abroad when you were younger or anybody in your family or were your children kind of pioneers in this this endeavor? What, What is your background? So for me, I had studied abroad myself in college. I was a Spanish Spanish major and studied in Salamanca myself and really wanted, um, you know, my, my kids to have that experience and getting involved with CIEE was just really the perfect way for them to get a little taste of, of study abroad. Uh, in high school. And it's something that I I hope they'll both pursue again uh, for, you know, a longer period of time once they're in college. Okay. Um, For me, it's kind of uh, a slightly different story. I was born abroad and came to the U.S. as an immigrant, so had to learn myself, you know, English as a foreign language. Um, And so for our kids, it was really about getting them involved in other cultures, um, and they were very enthusiastic. They each knew exactly what language they wanted to, despite they were all on different um, from Mandarin to French. But um, CIEE, what stood out to us was the fact that they had the homestay and it was that genuine connection with the people versus a tourist um, teen tour. Both have value. It's just different um, from for what you're looking for. And we wanted cultural um, integrity. We wanted uh good connections with the local community that can be fostered not only during the program, but had the ability to go past that. And so our children have gone through these and are still in contact with their families. So um, that was, you know, where we were coming from. And it's what I remember from when I was a 
sophomore in high school, a lifetime ago. I'm still very much connected to the family that hosted me in Nevers, France, a little town about two hours south of Paris. Um, and their children have come here and now the grandchildren, right? Like my children have gone and visited them and their children um, have also. So it's, again, it could be generational. And that was what we were looking for. Really creating those long lasting connections, right? Not just a mm -hmm. speak through the city, but really becoming immersed in part of the community, right? And really building those strong connections. How did you and your students um, find out about CIEE? Were there presentations at the school or was it something that a company that you had heard of? How did you come to find CIEE? So my situation is going to be a bit unique. Um, I'm an administrator in the school district where uh, my sons go to school and I am the world languages supervisor. So I'm the CIEE person <laughs> in my school. Um, so both of my boys knew they were, were going. <laughs> I, I didn't give them much choice. Um, and, but really, um, just you know, getting to to know CIEE and and seeing firsthand, um, having visited the a school and a program myself, and and really just talking with um, with students who have come back and seeing consistently student after student after student just a transformation in the students in terms of their language proficiency, their maturity, just their own personal growth after having the experience. Um, just, it, it, you know, um, for me, there, it, there was no doubt that, that I, I wanted my sons to, to experience that. Um, for me, uh, I run the international programs at our school and I also create our own internal programs uh, at Newark Academy. Uh, it's a school where all our kids have to do some kind of immersion and it could be linguistic wilderness or um, service learning. And my, I had watched children, other people's children, students over the years go with CIEE and come back from Argentina or Morocco or France um, and had had wonderful experiences, not only in their language and proficiency culture, but in their sense of independence. Um, and that's mm -hmm. something the kids spoke to and shared time after time. Um, so when it came to my kids, um, they could pick whatever category they wanted. And um, they were all very gun ho They spoke to other students that had gone and they made the choice for, you know, to apply to CIEE. My daughter, for example, multiple times, um, her older brother had gone to China and then she applied to France, but COVID happened. So, you know, she had to wait some time, reapply. Um, again, she wanted to do it. She had seen and had friends abroad um, doing these programs and she saw the value in it. So mm -hmm. in fact, it was more like, okay, you know, we need to figure out, we've got three kids. How are we <laughs> going to share the summer, the responsibilities? Um, and again, the program spoke to the children and the, our children wanted to do it. So it was an, an easy match for us. Fabulous. Um, so my next question and, and talking to you both, um, as educators, um, and as educators, very aware of and involved in the promotion of global education and the importance of global education for American teenagers, perhaps your perspective on this question is going to be a lot different than maybe some other parents who might be listening to this, but a thing that I did want to bring up is that, as you know, it's very rare for American high school students to study abroad. About 2% total, maybe, will study abroad at the moment, right? And this is something that we really hope to see grow. Mm -hmm. um, but at the, on the other hand, we understand that parents may a lot of times have reservations about sending their children abroad, right? Sending their teenagers to another country, sometimes when parents themselves have never left the country, right? So 
did you have any reservations? And again, I know that you and your experience would be very different, but I'm sure you can imagine what many of the reservations of parents might be. And how did you rationalize these or overcome any of the reservations if you did have them? I'll uh, go first. Um, for us, the reservations were um, predominantly with the oldest in China um, and then France, but for different reasons. For China, it's um, it's just a lengthy process um, with visas and getting it all organized. But CIEE was very good about indicating when and where to do things. Um, so that facilitated and gave us confidence. Um, for France, it was because it was coming out of COVID, right? So it, it wasn't just that it, you didn't know where now looking back, right? It was a smooth transition out of COVID, but when rules are changing, um, you don't know what's going to happen. Is your kid going to be there and not be able to come back or the unique situations? I think why CIEE made us feel comfortable and our kids, you know, we knew there was inherent risk. Like that is just a reality. Um, but that could be mitigated by the fact that CIEE has people on the ground all year round. And a lot of other companies that provide service like this, they are in for the summer and out during the rest of the year. They don't have a network that is in the community year round that knows. And that's what you, the benefit is with the families that live locally, but being there year after year and year round that you can understand, you know, is there a transportation strike? How is the community um, going to respond to this? Um, and I think that's the insight that CIE brings to the table and helps um, mitigate those factors that might otherwise paralyze families or children um, from taking that step or that opportunity. Great, yeah. I think that's a really great point. Um, and, and most definitely I agree. Uh, just knowing that CIEE has um, educators in the country. And, and I think also knowing that there's so much preparation that happens, not, not just on, on our end to get our child ready, but so much preparation on the part of CIEE. As parents, we were able to log in and to participate in the live sessions and to really um, just learn what would be expected from the parent side. Um, and then knowing that CIEE requires the students to do a, you know, before you go course, I really um, think that's a great way to help the students themselves be, you know, manage their own expectations of what's going to happen once they get abroad. Great. Yeah, I think that both of you have kind of really hit on that, the site, right? The site centers, the fact that CIEE does not just exist in the United States. When, when we have staff meetings or when we talk about CIEE and our colleagues, it is very much an international company with centers and people who are working, as you said, year round, right? Mm -hmm. And who know the culture, who host families, right? That come back year after year. I met in Barcelona this summer. I did a teacher visit in Barcelona and met a host mother who had host, she's hosted for like 15 years now. And just amazing. And who better to welcome somebody to Barcelona, mm -hmm. right? And somebody that at this point now also understands so well the experience of an American teenager coming to be abroad, right? Not only just that local perspective, but they are cultural brokers as well, these host families. And after so many years of it, they really truly understand the perspective of the American teenager. This, this woman, she was the cutest ever. She became vegetarian this summer because the girls who were living with her were vegetarian. <laughs> so yeah, I think that really speaks to what makes the IEE so great, right in the safety on site. Um, I know that you have touched on this, but what 
would you say you has been the impact that you've witnessed in both your own children and as educators? Because I know, Michelle, you have had contact mm -hmm. with many students who have gone abroad with CIEE. What, what is the impact and the growth that you've noticed? Do they, do you see them come back transformed? Are they different kids when they come back after a month yes. of CIE abroad? It, indeed, it, it truly um, transformed. Uh, I'm thinking of some of our shy students uh, that ha you know are hesitant to use the language in class with their teacher or with classmates. When they come back, all of that fear is gone, and and they're confident, and they're not uh, afraid to make a mistake because it, they they realize you know that they're going to make mistakes. Everybody makes mistakes when you're learning, and that's okay. Um, but it, it's the the confidence level I, I think that that truly um, it is so amazing to to witness the the change in in the students when they come back and so many students um, tell me I, I even had one last year who when he was applying to college he's like oh, I'm going I'm studying abroad my first semester I'm like your first semester really <laughs> like. Um, but he was so intent on going again. And so many of our of the students tell me they cannot wait to go for a semester or a year in college that that this really just sort of whet their appetite. And they they want to further deepen their language proficiency and their cultural competency. And uh, and that just, you know, that that makes me smile. That, that's that's what it's all about. That's fantastic. And as a plug, we now have a first year abroad program with CIEE. <laughs> Wonderful. Yes, yeah, students can go and do their first year of college abroad. Yeah. I, I couldn't agree more. Um, their linguistic ability, whether in Mandarin, Spanish, French, mm -hmm. um, Italian, different languages is easily measurable. I would add to that, that in addition to that, the linguistic and cl cultural proficiency, um, what we have seen in our students is their maturity, sense of independence, but perspective, this mm -hmm. notion that it is not just my community or this is the norm. They have a new way of looking at it, another perspective that makes them more analytical, more reflective, more engaged and less quick to judge or say this is the only way and that then translates to their um curiosity in the classroom but also outside their willingness to engage a problem in a new way or a different way than maybe some of their peers who haven't had that uh opportunity to negotiate another reality to negotiate what another norm is on a daily basis i mean it, it being abroad, being with a host family, it makes you humble, right? Like you both said, like it's about making mistakes and you've got to embrace that. That's something we do so easily as children. Um, but I think that mm -hmm. stagnates when you get, especially to the high school age kids when adolescents are developing. And I think part of that barrier um, or that fear um, is helped to deteriorate when they are in these immersion programs because there is nobody grading, because it's a give and take, because it's a coexistence of two cultures coming together and having to figure out how to negotiate um, and those personalities and those traditions. Um, so again, I just, I think it helps the overall child, the learner, but also the transition to adulthood and what it means to have to be responsible for yourself and how you impact the community and how that, uh, what you take away from that community. Yes. The sense of independence that I noticed and that I've seen even with kids that I met for three days on program in Barcelona this summer, for example, right? One girl wanted to come back and she just really wanted to tell people about how when you go abroad, you need to learn how to plan your day and pack what you need for the day. And, but really just learning how to be an adult, right? Um, and so, 
But how amazing that a 15 year old is having this experience before college, right? And not waiting till they're 19 or 20 to realize that they need to learn these skills. Um, and something that I always say is so amazing about CIEE is how um, because it's not a school-based study abroad where just the school goes and you're just staying with the same kids from your school, not only do you gain international, intercultural competency within in an international framework, right, of, okay, I'm going to Spain, so I'm going to learn about Spanish culture, you are... The students are also getting so much cultural competency with other Americans, learning mm -hmm. about other parts of the USA, right? Because even that, somebody from the Northeast is going to think it's a given. This is how we are, and this is how it is, and this is what the culture is. And then they go and meet somebody from California or from Hawaii or from Texas or Alaska, and their worldview is completely challenged, even in their sense of their home identity, right? Um, which I think is really amazing. And they, they've they commented on that a lot um, about like slang, right? They'll be like, yeah, in Chicago, they say this word and it's the craziest word for slang. And I've never heard that word. Um, but I bet you in six months, it's gonna be on TikTok and they're all gonna be saying it. <laughs> Good. So um, from a parent's perspective, and this question um, may be a little bit more difficult, but in from a parent's perspective, would you say that you've gained anything from having your child study abroad? What and what ways did it benefit you as a parent? That's a great question. Um, I, I guess it helped prepare me more for my son to go to college, I suppose. Um, you know, I, I knew he was in good hands and I knew somebody was, was checking on him. So that helped. Um, but I, I, I think just having that, that trust that he's going to find his way in the world and, um, and, you know, watching, him uh, just learn and grow, I, I think really gave me a sense of pride as a, as a parent to be able to, to witness that. Great. Wow. <laughs> so different, um, I think, for each of my kids. Um, with my oldest, who's currently a senior in college, um, the idea of um, having a kid abroad for five weeks um, definitely prepared me for him studying away in China in uh, Shanghai, Kunshan area. Um, and what that means as a parent versus in the U.S. where, you know, we see our kids they, on a daily basis. Not only that, but we have so much opportunity to engage with them, um, what they're like when they're uh, abroad, how much they communicate or depend on um the skills they've developed along the way and to fine tune those between each of the times that he went, it was like almost like a, a different child had gone each time. Mm -hmm. um, with our middle child, our girl, who is now a freshman in college, um, <sighs> missing, you know, it, it gives you that taste of, oh, what is it going to be like when these kids aren't home? Um, and she is very charismatic and would like call all the time and explain what she was doing with the host family, who she had met, what you were talking about, kids from across California and Texas turned out to be some of her best friends. They've seen each other, you know, at college, she's at Georgetown, um, two of her best friends, one's at Vassar and the other one at Fordham. And they all came together from very different family backgrounds and cultural and religious traditions because of CIE and the interaction. So, to me, um, well, you know, I had never thought about the connectivity that they would have just with other American kids, but how much that would impact my kids' 
afterward, like what they wanted to do. And she, she hasn't stopped talking about going there and going back to France and doing Science Po, for example, and with some of those kids. And for me saying, I'm so glad that she made some of these friends, right? When she was in high school and they're going to be with her and they are with her through this journey as she's becoming an adult. So um, for me, it was a, a gift that I didn't realize yes the friends abroad I realized but not what would come back with her in those friendships with the American kids wow that's it's actually that's really touching right like that's all I can say to that right just imagining these this group of kids now going through life together right um and that's I mean, I see, like I told you, I was a PL, a program leader in Lisbon a couple of years ago, and I still have most of the kids on Instagram. And um, the way they support each other from across the country, right? When one of them gets accepted to college, they're all posting about it. They're, um, one of them, she's a freshman, she's just started her freshman year at Harvard. And oh my God, when she got accepted, right? The All 15 of them were going crazy. Um, they're meeting up, things like that. And you, you see that they really did make these beautiful connections. And I remember two years ago witnessing it in person and becoming emotional. I think even on my last night, I was just so blown away by what good friends they were to each other and how beautiful their connection was. And the fact that two years later, I'm still seeing that connection still going strong. It's it's really amazing. There's something to be said about traveling abroad and the the kinds of bonds that you mm -hmm. you make and those kind of experiences as well right in France, I remember hearing actually from her and her friends because they called on FaceTime um, when they were crossing um, the sands to go to Sao Melo, right? And they could drag their feet and were making patterns. And then when the water came in, it was such a um, wonderful experience for them to be out there so early. They didn't like getting up early, but that is a vivid image that I've heard them talk about time and time again. Um, and so that to me is phenomenal because, you know, kids usually talk about in general, oh, I love the food or this, but they were talking about concrete moments, exact location. So they had absorbed that, um, I thought was a wonderful. And then my quieter son, who is now a sophomore, he was just there this summer, you know, he loved going to the park and getting to talk to local vendors, right? And he's a Shire kid. So the fact that he remembered the Tom War uh, Park and and then um, the Plaza of Santa Anne. Again, he loved having that independence, the money that they gave him every day, and that he had to go figure out where to eat, you know, where he could get an opportunity, which is something a lot of American kids don't, right? They get on the bus or they drive with parents home, and then they come um you know, they're home, they're in their house. If they go anywhere, it's in a car. In most of these countries, they're taking mass transit. So the independence mm -hmm. of figuring it out and, oh, by the way, missing that last bus home and trying to figure out how you're going to get to your host family, uh, but handling it uh, and not finding out as a parent till the next day. And you're like, glad you figured that out and didn't call me last night <laughs> at 11 o'clock, you know? Yeah. But, um, I think those to me are the endearing moments that they don't get to have those kind of experiences in at least the American life that my kids have here. I can't, you know, speak for Michelle. Right. No, absolutely. Really, the the one thing I would say, not so much a, a favorite story, but uh, um, part that makes me smile about my son's trip is that on their free time, that he and the, the group of friends that he was, you know, getting so close to that they enjoyed going to museums. Um, I, as a mom, that made me smile. It's like, <laughs> great, you know? Um, and and the, the artwork that he enjoyed um, on his own, um, uh, you know, observing and, and learning about. And uh, just for him to learn that he really enjoyed being in a city where there was so much to do. Um, and I, you know, that I thought was, was great. I felt like he really took advantage of what was there. And, uh, and so that, that, 
made me really happy. Yeah, that intellectual curiosity, right? It's always exactly. satisfying to find a teenager having it, right? Yes. <laughs> that when it's your own child, even more satisfying. Um, do either of you have any advice for a parent who might be on the fence or a parent who is beginning to consider the study abroad experience, starting their journey with researching options, needs that last push in deciding any advice? So every now and then I, I have the opportunity uh, working in a high school. I, I tell the students, if if your parents have questions, if they're uncertain, please have them call me. Um, even before I had sent my son, I, I would sit down with parents just having gone to see a program and to observe the security procedures myself, observing the role of the program leader um, and, and how supportive that role is on a daily basis. Um, I really, uh, for me personally, I, I feel like that's, um, that's the person who's there that, the, you know, the the students are going to go to if they if they need something if if they are lost that they're, they're going to call um if they you know yes they'll have a teacher of their language class and they have their host family as well but knowing that there's a program leader there to help them through all of the you know the any bumps in the road that that might come up um, I really feel like that's uh, a unique piece that other programs don't provide that really um, helps CIEE, um, really just helps the students. And, and I think that's helpful to parents as well. Certainly as an educator, I know the value of the curriculum and I see the proficiency growth when they come back. Um, and I can most definitely speak to the value of that, but it's important also for parents to know that their child will be safe, that their child will be cared for, that they'll be in a home with a host family that is, is just wonderful and it will take care of their child as if, you know, he or she were their own child. I, I think that really um, it is important for parents to know. And for me, I, I think that's what sets CIEE apart from other programs. Yeah, um, I agree. Uh, safety is, I think, top priority for the majority of parents that I have talked to over the years. And um, it, my top priority when looking at uh, programs and when we were discussing these with our kids um, and I think that's where um, CIEE has a huge advantage. You're celebrating 60, 70 years? Uh, 71 or? Okay. So <laughs> with, with that amount of years comes a working knowledge of the ground and a network that when stuff happens, they can react, right? Nobody can avoid a kid from twisting their ankle or maybe an appendicitis. It, it happens. Um, but knowing the people in the area, knowing what hospitals can treat what, having an entire network that knows the community you're in and can negotiate that on behalf of your child and keep you um in good communication, I think is key um, and essential um, for the safety of our children abroad. Um, and to me, again, is one of the reasons that um, we have been so supportive when our kids have said, I want to go to this country. I want to go to China. I want to go to France. Um, and, you know, our youngest wants to go again. And it's, you know, maybe to a new city, maybe to Ren, But Again, it was that infrastructure that 
put responsibility on the child, but uh, responsibility in the sense of how they manage that time, communicating with CIEE people, and having that direct conversation with the child. The parents are informed um, and know what's going on, but the child um, is taught to advocate for themselves and has direct connections with the CIEE local staff. Um, and that's where the child is empowered and the safety comes from because they can help themselves and communicate effectively. And I think CIEE does an amazing job with that. Great. Thank you both so much for your time. I don't know if either of you have anything to add to the conversation, anything else that we haven't touched on? No? Best decision we made, really. Um, just so, so happy with the decision. Um, and and really, really happy with the program. It's a great experience. Thank you. Thank you so much for taking time to talk to us. And I know that this conversation is going to be so valuable to so many parents as they're making the decision. And I really hope that um, people take into consideration all of your very informed opinions as both parents of multiple children going abroad and educators and global citizens yourselves, right, who who um, understand the importance of educational exchange internationally. So thank you so much for your time. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you for listening to Out of Your Comfort Zone. For more information on high school study abroad programs, visit CIEE.org slash Global Navigator.